Today, we're just going to give, it's very simple, we're here at ACON to talk about human pup play as a fetish and safety of human pup play, worth considering since we're bashing the wall, and also to answer any questions. It's purely a question and answer. Everyone's got a, a little handout, but ACON have very thoughtfully given us also a play safe, play hard bag, which has some great stuff inside. Um, how hard play packs. They're all for you to take home with you. What is human pup play ball? I might use an example. Um, Lachlan, do you mind coming forward? And could you bring your gear with you? come here and, and turn around so everyone can see you. So Lachlan seems like a, a fairly regular dude here, just a mild-mannered guy, and you know, he does, he works the health department, he's a nice, cool dude, and you know, his fetish though, or his play, is something that people can think is ridiculous or bizarre. And it kind of is. So if you could put on your knee pads. And so, when you meet people and you're talking about what you're into, and usually it's, am I top, bottom, versatile, am I a femme, am I butch, or am I whatever, it, there's all kind of labelling that goes on for people. But if you eventually say, well, I'm into human pup play, people will often go to, straight to bestiality, going, oh, okay, well, I'm sorry, I don't do canine, whatever abbreviation it is. And that's cool for people to make that leap, because when you're unfamiliar or ignorant, you just grab onto whatever makes sense to you and you latch onto the nearest kind of thing. Has anyone, any pup players in the room ever had that assumption? You have had that happen to you, but the person's immediately gone. Now, could you put on your hood? Excellent. But clearly, looking at Lockie, he does not look like a dog. <laughs> he does not look like anything that a dog or a canine would like to have any kind of conjugal or intimate relations with. A dog will look at him and go, what the hell is going on here? You're wearing a mask and you seem to be armoured up. I'm confused. Um, dogs look at our eyes, but they look at our, our body language a lot to try and work out, hey, you know, what do you want? Uh, are we going for a walk or are you feeding me? Or who are you and why are you in this building? Why are you, why are you in this backyard? What human pup play is about is pretending that you're a dog and developing a pers personality or a persona of being a dog. The same way that you would, as a furry, go, hey, I'm a dragon who was raised by sheep herders <laughs> and I have magical powers and my mum's a unicorn and I love my wolf brother pack. And it's completely cool because, like, that's just part of an imaginary and a vastly rich and creative kind of expression. And sometimes very dim, well not sometimes, crosses into fursuiting. So you're going to get a person building an actual fursuit of how they're going to look like that. I, I, I have dragon wings. They're very elaborate, but they're kind of cool. Human pup play is not furry. It's not fursonas. It's not fursuiting. It is very close to it though, and it owes a lot to Ferryden. On the other hand, you might just think it's about BDSM, and I can give you an example of how that will kind of look, because you would just like put on a submission collar, like this, and particularly if you've got hoods that look much more like if I take this one, that they're traditionally used for kind of a look of BDSM. And when I say BDSM, I mean bondage and discipline and sadomasochism. And this is where, down boy, 
where a master is going to be treating another person like they're scum or like they're precious, like they're property, but it's about the relationship. It's about turning another person into an object or into a pet. Usually involves pink, pissing all over. You can sit back up, boys, but be quiet. It involves pissing all over them or sticking them in the cage. It can broaden into other activities, but it usually involves a relationship. And the dog or the pup will be in a submissive or controlled role. Furries over here, I'm out of control. I can fly. Over here, shut up. There's nothing wrong with either of those things. And when I say the dragons and masters being harsh, there's a huge spectrum across both those, I don't even want to call them fetishes, but pursuits and lifestyles and expressions. You can get really creative and harsh, or you can get really banal and boring. Same with the other one. Pub play is somewhere in between. And it's its own unique thing. What you have in human pub play is you usually have gear, like a collar, mitts, pads, the hood, and of course the tail, which George is going to talk about in a short while. But it's all about making you look like a pup. Could you do a, a kneel? It's about approximating what looks to be a dog. And just being in that role. And like making the sounds. Give me give me an aru. Aru. And see, you can form a relationship or experience the person not as a person but as a human part. Thank you, Lachlan. I'll take this collar off for you. If you could take your gear off, I'll just go sit back down. That's great.